Hi Greedy 3 ds a couple of weeks ago I watched Henry over at the Creative Collector use this stuff on a Colossus head and I thought I really do want to have a go with this. So I racked my brain as to think what could I make with it and the Winter Soldier arm came into my head. So today I'm going to be making a Winter Soldier bust, that one there, and I'll show you how I use this graphite powder on his arm. Now if you do like what you see today don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, we have got a Patreon. Really would appreciate it if you just take a look at that and consider joining if you if you like what you see. If you want to get any of the products, you can get them from the item description. But more importantly, I hope you enjoy what you see today. And uh, thank you, Henry, at the Creative Collector, for this uh, great idea. Stay tuned. <music> Now, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know I've got a Saturn S in the house in the greedy 3D man cave. And these are the first couple of prints that it's produced. Absolutely beautiful. I did the whole of the Winter Soldier on this and uh, it has not let me down. Wonderful, wonderful prints. So first things first, PPE, get yourself a filter mask and make sure you wear it when you're doing any of your painting. I've got this spray booth here which has also got a wonderful vacuum just to take a few more of the fumes away. Fantastic. So I'm moving on to painting the flesh to start with and I'm going to be using the Army Painter Air Set Mega, Pen Mega Set here. I'm going to use some of the Nomad Flesh and I'm going to work from the top on old Bucky Barnes and I'm going down across his face. I'm going to leave some of the black under his eyes in and some of the black under his chin and just under his nose. I'm going to give it a really light spray. It's almost like a, a zenithal shade really coming from the top down with this darker of the skin tones from the Army Painter triad of these colours. And uh, that's what he looks like when he's on. Don't forget the ears and make sure you get the whole lot of the face. Moving on to the second uh, head, which is Bucky wearing his uh, mask with his long hair. Not as much skin on here, but I'm still going to make sure I get all that skin and leave the shadow under his eyes and just uh, where you would expect it to be if the light was coming down from the top. And there we go. And there's the second head done. I'm using a hairdryer in between coats just to expedite the process a little bit and um once you've done that, you can let it dry naturally if you want to, but this just means you can speed the process up. I'm going on to the mid-range flesh tone, which is Barbarian Flesh, and I'm only going to give it a little bit of a hit at, from the top down with this. I don't want to change the whole colour of the face. I'm just going to give certain sections of it, like the top of his nose and the forehead, a quick blast. And that's what one of them looks like on the left with it, and one without. That's the base tone on the right and the Barbarian on the left. So the second head is also getting a layer of the Barbarian flesh in exactly the same manner. And once that's done, I'm going to seal the painting. I don't want my grubby little fingers to pull it off. So I'm using a little bit of this Rust-Oleum sealer, some matte sealer to get their heads protected for the next step. So the base layers of flesh are on, it is sealed and it's ready to go. There's both of the heads. This is what they look like with just that base layer on. Um, getting ready now for the next bit of work on it. Okay, moving, while that's drying, we're going to move on to the base. And I'm using some Terrain Primer from the Army Painter and I'm just going to give this a blast. It's almost like a greeny black colour and it will just add to the, the final effect. Using some metallic chrome, again from Rust-Oleum, I'm going to do the shield inside and out. I'm just going to give it a blast all across. Again, look at those particles in the air. Make sure you are using ventilation. Now, this is the arm. This has had a layer of um, shiny black spray rattle cam paint, and I've let that dry for the next stage. So that's had a different primer to the rest. And I think it's about time we played with the graphite powder. Okay, first things first, make sure you're wearing some PPE, some respirators. This stuff is fine dust. You do not want to be breathing it in. What else you're going to be needing is this. This is the Creta Colour Graphite Powder. I will put a link in the description to where you can get this from Amazon. I'll just open it up so you can have a look. It is really, really fine powder. So. Just be really careful, as I say, make sure you wear your respiratory protection. I'm going to use the lid as well to try and capture a bit of it because it does go everywhere. You're going to need yourself a brush to put it on with. And you're going to need some cotton wool to buff it. 
What I've done with this, I've already given it a coat over of some gloss black, which has been allowed to dry. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just paint over it with some of this graphite powder, mask on. I was quite surprised how easy it goes on. The coverage is really, really good and it doesn't tend to come off once it's on there. So, so far, so good. Now, once you've given it a really good lathering, get that lid on, you do not want to be knocking it over, and get some cotton wool and buff it. It comes up really, really lovely when you get some cotton wool on it and buff it up. Now, I should have worn gloves. I am covered in graphite. Graphite, it is everywhere, all over me. It's all over the worktop. This stuff is messy, but the end result is absolutely beautiful, and what a fantastic way to do a winter soldier arm. Now, it takes a hell of a lot of buffing, so uh, get it nice and shiny and there we go it is done there is his harm really pleased with that oh, it's not the last time I use it imagine this on terminators weapons or as the creative collector did on Colossus I thought it would look nice just for comparison to put it next to some matte black just so you can see the difference. Okay, skin tone, some pure red to start with and I've watered it right down to a wash and I'm just gonna put some of this in the areas around his face that would naturally be red. That's under his eyes and around his nasal labial folds across his chin and across his forehead. It's really watered down this, so you will need to just spread it out and we're gonna have to do a few different layers of this very same color, allowing to dry in between. I'm doing exactly the same on uh, the second of the winter soldier heads. No difference at all, same red wash. The fingers on his right hand are getting a little bit of barbarian flesh just to match the rest of the skin tones. And I'm going to use some of this Martian brown to do the straps across his arm that would be the straps from the shield. So I'm going to pop that on. Um, I'm also going to use this brown to do other bits and pieces as well. But this is a lovely brown for leather and I'm going to put a dark wash on it at the end just to give it a little bit more life. And there we go, just to mirror, I'm doing the straps also on the inside of the shield. And as I said earlier, here's another wash going on. Now with each wash that you put on, you will notice that the red will get a little bit deeper each time. We don't want to turn it red completely. We just want to give it a pinky kind of shade. So build your layers up with your washes uh, slowly and uh, regularly, and they will turn the bottom of the eyes and wherever else you put them, a nice shade of pinky rosy red. And there we go. That's what it's starting to look like. You can see be under his eyes and round by his, his nasal labial folds, that, that colour. And again on this one, not so clear on this one, but you can see the difference. To add a little bit more depth to the face, I'm just using a hard bristled toothbrush with some of that brown paint watered down. And I'm just speckling it across the face to add some freckles or just some imperfections to the skin. And I'm going to do the same to both of the faces, as you can see here not overdoing it. Time for a little bit of matte black. 
my eyes are always done the same and I'm using these magnification glasses that I'll put a link in the description where you can buy some. I'm going to start off doing black on the whites of the eyes. I always do this. It makes it so, so much easier when you put the whites in then to have that shadow above and below the eye. And that's what it looks like with the black in. Try to keep it where it needs to go and not to get it all over your skin tones and just get it in the parts of the eye that are going to be white. Now, moving on to some greedy gold, I'm going to use this on the inner parts of the arm and I'm just going to add some of those lower bits and that will just take away the monotony, if you will, of the silver colour and uh, in the film uh, you can see that there are gold bits interspersed with the silver, so that's what I'm doing here. Using a white with just a soup sort of grey just for the whites of his eyes and you can see now what I mean when I say I put the black in first and the white in second. It adds that great shadow effect above and below the eye and there is the second of the heads with exactly the same. Now Bucky Barnes is going to be looking right so I'm using that fine pen and the black paint to just put the irises across to the right hand side as you can see there and exactly the same in the other face. Uh, I've just fitted it to the body just to see which direction it would be looking and that is the direction he would be going. Now Bucky's eyes are blue so I'm using some Griffin blue and as you can see there what I've done is I've just put an inner layer of blue through the black and I've dotted on a pupil and that's the eyes pretty much done on both of them. Eyebrows next and really fine brush bit of paint and I'm painting the eyebrows on virtually individually. It's the best way of doing them. Don't squadge them on like a caterpillar. The hair on the Winter Soldier is a very dark brown so I've taken some brown and I've mixed it with some black and I'm using a, a quite a wide brush really to just get the outline of the hair on and then I'm going to get it right the way across on both of the characters. Obviously the second head has longer hair, no different though it's going to be the same colour. Base layer of hair is now done and I'm going to just do some dry brushing of a very lighter brown over the top when it dries. The main body is not too uh, difficult. It's just gonna have some dry brushed silver across it. But what I'm gonna do is just exannuate the buckles on his belt uh, there, just to make that stand out a little bit and just look a little bit different from the bland that the rest of his top is gonna be. It is gonna be just black with some dry brushing, but now we're gonna pop some silver buckles on. And there we go, there's the dry brushing began. I'm doing his arm and I'm gonna do the chest with just a little bit of uh, primer gray just to add the highlights on there. And there's the top done with the buckles. For the shield, the best paints I've found are these. This is Gemstone from the Army Air Set and it goes on absolutely lovely. It's an airbrush paint that does paint on wonderfully. And uh, this I've used before on a Captain America shield because the colour is just brilliant. I've used a large brush to even it out and there's the second layer going on. Now it will need two layers, so let it dry and put the other layer on. But for the blue, I'm gonna be using Elvin Armour and uh, again, you're gonna need two layers of this. Back to some grey primer and we're going to dry brush the base just to give that a look of some rocks and give it a good blast all over. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the emblem there. There's a little bit more work to be done to that but I'm going to give it a base layer of grey. And I'm going to take some silver and just highlight the stars on the base and also the Russian wording. If you know what the Russian wording is then send it me in the, uh, in the little box that YouTube allows you to leave a comment. And finally on this logo I'm just going over some of the letters to make it stand out just a little bit more. 
Okay, taking some of this chalk, I'm going to scrape it off using a really sharp knife onto a little bit of kitchen towel. And this I'm going to use just to create a five o'clock shadow on Bucky Barnes. You just take a dry brush and literally just dab it on in the places where his beard would be. Don't overdo it and you'll put some on and as soon as you blow it, most of it will come off. It's important once you've done this as well and you're happy with it to seal it with some clear sealer as over time this will come off if you don't do it and that's the model virtually finished now i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today make sure you leave a comment make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure that you have a look as well at the patreon and i hope um i hope you found something of use today please leave a comment please like please share it with your friends and i'll see you next time on greedy 3d